tomorrow. It's Sevilla at Dortmund for the second leg. It was 3-2 in the first leg in Seville. Both teams lost domestically this past weekend. And one worry was seeing Erling Haaland hobbling off after scoring a brace. But it looks like he'll be available for Tuesday's match. Lucho, who do you favour in this second leg? At the moment, in the way that we've seen, even though the Dortmund uh, lost at the weekend, we know how how, how important it is for them uh, Europa League. They are long, far away from from Champions League spots in the league, in the domestic league. No, no thinking about even try to get closer to Bayern Munich. But uh, in the uh, uh, Champions League, they can do something important. They got uh, all the qualities at the moment. They got fantastic players. They have been building uh, uh, even a stronger team. And Sevilla is, is the other way around. There is a team who, after uh, having a big blow at the cup uh, having a comeback from Barcelona and not doing well in the league uh, the team's getting closer from behind Real Sociedad even Betis they got a, a very important game uh, next weekend against uh, the derby in Sevilla and, and Betis getting closer to them Real Sociedad as well so I don't see this Sevilla trying to get back uh, against uh, Dortmund a Dortmund that really needs to continue going in this competition yeah, I agree with Lucho. I think both teams are question marks in some ways. And with regard to Dortmund, I think what gives me the biggest concern for them is no Jaden Sancho in this one. He was very good in leg one. No Rafael Guerrero from the left back position, which is another big loss for them. So their left side is a little bit weakened. And now the replacement for Jaden Sancho, who we all want to see play, Gio Reyna, doesn't look like he is going to play either. So there are some question marks there with regard to who is going to give the ball to Erling Holland. And yes, he got hurt this past weekend. But let's be honest, the guy's a robot, so he's going to be fine. And then on Sevilla's side, what I thought they learned it from leg two because they were down 3-1 at halftime leg two they won that second half or excuse me leg one they won that second half 1-0 and what they did is they went to a back three they split their two center backs Jules Kunde and Diego Carlos and put Fernando who's their center defensive mid back into that like back three and then they handled everything from that point I think we're going to see the same and I actually think the Sevilla is going to win but I think Dortmund has done enough to go through I love how Jimmy's just making excuses for that uh, yeah, tip uh, Sevilla last game. Well done, Jimmy Conrad there. <laughs> um, listen, it's, it's going to be very difficult for Sevilla. They know they've got to go for goals. They're away from home. They're a team that certainly can score goals. I almost feel like Borussia Dortmund burst their bubble some way because they were on a great run. They weren't conceding goals. Um, they were winning matches. And then all of a sudden you lose a game like that. What does it do to your confidence? What does it do to the team selection? And it looked like it's really harmed Sevilla. But this is still a very, very talented team. And they will cause this Borussia Dortmund side problems. Defensively, I still think Borussia Dortmund have got mega issues. Goalkeeper's a problem, centre-back's a problem, right-back's a problem, and that's where Sevilla will see we have an opportunity to score goals. They did so in the second half, as Jimmy mentioned, and they will absolutely go for goals in the second leg. Can they stop Borussia Dortmund scoring goals? That's a problem right there. Bayern Munich couldn't stop them from scoring goals, especially the way they got off to that wonderful start in the game in the Klassiker. Even though they lost the game, it was a very good start for them. And I think missing out on Jadon Sancho wasn't too bad, considering, you see, Hazard came in, played very well, Royce did very well, but they didn't get the job done. Dortmund, can they get the job done? That's the big question. I think they can, but they might just lose this game. Well, you think they can. Let's cast our minds back to the pre-match coverage of this because you did say at the time it'll be a 3-2 finish. Jimmy Conrad said, if that hits, Ian, I will be stood on this table. So, Ian, I feel like you've, Still got, waiting. you've got to give us a prediction for this one. Do you think Dortmund's going to go through? Jimmy said to me he was going to take me out and I'm still waiting for Jimmy to take me out. So once we get the vaccine, I think that's happening. Um, this one's very difficult to predict. I think Borussia Dortmund, if Haaland plays, they will win this game. But there is a risk that he is not 100% fit. It looks like it was a blister problem against Bayern Munich and he came off the field because of that. So that, if that's a problem going forward and he doesn't start or comes out early, it's a problem for them in this game. But I'm going for a fair, fair result. I think we could see uh, Borussia Dortmund 2-1 win if Haaland plays or a 1-1 draw if he doesn't. Oh, we like it. Well, talking of injury worries for Dortmund, Gio Reyna didn't travel with the squad for, to, the, to Munich and it looks like he could miss Tuesday's match as well. Jimmy, what have you made of what we've seen from Gio Reyna this season at Dortmund so far? Well, he got off to a hot start. He found himself in a nice position. I don't think there were a lot of expectations. And he's done a really good job of, of playing off the, the shoulder of Erling Haaland in those pockets right when Marco Royce was hurt for a while. So he had got a, a run of games. But since then, it's been very hard for him to get back into the team. Uh, Marco Royce, obviously, is back in. He's going to be the captain anytime he steps on the field for the black and yellow. Then Jaden Sancho started to find his form, and it's been difficult for him. Now, the interim manager, Edin Terzic, has been playing him out wide. They can obviously see his talent. They're trying to get him on the field. But he hasn't felt as comfortable or looked 
this comfortable out there. He's a good friend of Erling Holland. Erling Holland definitely wants him on the field. You can sense that, but it hasn't really parlayed or translated into him having success and getting those numbers that we know that he's capable of. And it's as tough as it is to say, he's getting somewhat dealing with adversity. We want to see how he copes. And once he works through this, it's only going to help him moving forward. So yes, it's hard right now. We want to see him have success, but it's just going to take some time for him to get there. And thanks God, it's going to take some time. He's only 18. I can I cannot imagine myself to go in there, arriving with 18 years old, getting to a top team in Europe and try to uh, play the same way that he's playing with that kind of maturity. I think he's done an amazing job in the first few months, of course, with injuries, with players, with the pressure of dealing off a good team, an important team who has to do well in every single competition. And that's something that the, the, a, a, a kid, because we can call it a kid of 18 years old, uh, is very difficult to deal with. I think he's done fantastic he has to adapt to some kind of situation uh, we all know that he likes to be on the ball that kind of movement between the pockets is fantastic he needs to track back a little bit more he will grow his muscle his fitness he will go a little bit better and that will help him to to adapt more to the to the domestic league and also international international wise so i think that uh, for now on, we will see a better, a better Giovanni Reina. He's surrounded by young players, by uh, players who have a lot of experience who are going to help him to improve his, vein, his, his game. So I think it's been a very, uh, fair to say, a very good uh, season for him. Let's see if they can continue adding things to this Dortmund team. Yeah, four goals, says assist for Gio Reyna across all competitions. And, uh, okay, I'm a, a fan of him, right? I really see the talent that's within Gio Reyna, and I think he's got tremendous future. But you also have to try to be consistent, which he has not been for Borussia Dortmund, especially in 2021. He hasn't had a goal or an assist in 2021. You have to go all the way back to December 12th, if I'm not mistaken, for his last goal or assist against Stuttgart. And that is disappointing. And one thing about Borussia Dortmund with making changes, new boss coming in, if you don't perform, and you don't bring stats, you won't get into that starting 11. And there's also a new coach coming in, in Marco Rosa, who's got to try and impress. And to do that, you must try get your stats up there. There's no doubt about it. It's an impact in his career. It will weigh on him, not having those stats along there, no assist or no goals. But this is a talented player. His future looks great for him. And he will find his form at some point. And I hope it's between now and the end of the season. Well, we'll see if he travels with the squad for tomorrow's match. Yes,